What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, or it's your first time here, welcome. So today we are going to be mm, diving deep, deep within the archives of my YouTube channel. So I thought it would be fun to go back to one of my old favorites video and sort of like revisit all the products that I talk about and give you guys my updated feelings on them. Hey guys, future Jamie here. Now I completely forgot to mention that this video was inspired by another YouTuber. Her name is Beauty with Emily Fox and she does like a similar thing where she talks about um, her old favorites and whether or not she still likes them. So I will link her channel down below. I thought it would just be really interesting and fun just to sort of see how my tastes have changed throughout the year. I was 21 when I filmed this video, I'm now 24. And you always think that like you can't change that much in three years, but I really feel like I'm like, a different person in so many different aspects of my life and especially in the way that I do and apply my makeup. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy today's video. Don't forget to let me know down below in the comments some of your favorite products that you used to have in 2015. Let me know if you remember that. And if you do remember, let me know if you still use the products that you used to use all the time or have they sort of just uh, found a place in the back of your vanity. So without further ado, let's get started. Guys, I don't think you understand how cringy it is for me to watch my old videos. It is always so uncomfortable. I would literally just scream at the camera and talk so fast, I don't even think I breathe. So the whole video basically just sounds like a long run on sentence. Oh my God, it gives me like heart palpitations when I watch those videos when I'm talking like so intensely. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my June favorites. I don't think I've ever had so many favorites as I do this month. Like every single time I would find a new product that I love this month, I was like, oh my God, yes, I cannot wait to talk about it in my June favorites. So I'm very excited that this video is finally here because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in this bag. This is obviously going to be a long one, so let's jump right into it. Now, first of all, I filmed this video in my very first bedroom. This is my childhood bedroom, guys. Oh my God, if you've been around since the purple wall, please let me know down below because that means that you've been around for a really long time. So guys, let's get started. So apparently June was the month of gloss. Now, I never wear gloss ever until this month. So apparently June 2015 was the month of gloss. That was probably very out of the box for me because I think during that time I was really into like matte lips and liquid lipsticks. I mean, so was everybody else on the internet. That's literally all everybody wore were liquid lipsticks. They were very, very, very trendy at that point. I feel like they were just starting to become very trendy. So gloss really wasn't something that I was wearing a ton. Um, cannot relate right now because gloss is literally the only thing that I put on my lips. As you can see, my lips are quite glossy today. I literally have, I'm not kidding, four different glossy lip products layered on top of each other on my lips currently. The two lip gloss products that I did mention are products that I really feel like have stood the test of time for me. They're products that I have not been able to stop using really since this video essentially. And they are the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Creme Brulee as well as the Marc Jacobs Lip Glosses. I really think June 2015 is when I fully discovered the Marc Jacobs Lip Glosses. Okay, so the first gloss that I want to talk about, and this is the one that I reach for the most, I think, this is the NYX Butter Gloss in the color Creme Brulee. The NYX Butter Gloss was my first love from NYX, the brand. Like, I remember people used to talk about these all the freaking time on YouTube, and at the time, I actually wasn't able to get um, any NYX products in Canada, so I would have to go off of eBay and order these products, so these were like sacred to me because I had to go such a long way to actually get them. I really feel like the NYX Butter Gloss really just showed me what a good gloss could be. Before the Butter Gloss, the only other gloss that I would really wear would be like the MAC Lip Gloss, which is the stickiest lip gloss on the face of the planet. The Butter Glosses are like butter. They're so smooth and comfortable to wear. They're really, really glossy. And this shade in Creme Brulee is beautiful. It's like the perfect picky nude, which means it's like the most amazing, just like everyday color. I love a good pinky nude. The Butter Gloss has been and will probably always be a favorite of mine, especially the Creme Brulee shade. It's like a classic. Same thing goes with the Marc Jacobs glosses. These are the Marc Jacobs lip glosses. Now, the only reason I picked these up was because of who else? Jaclyn Hill. She was talking to them. She was talking to them. She was talking about them, I think in her May or April favorites. You guys know how much I love these. I will probably continue to wear them for a very, very long time. They're some of my favorite glosses. They give a really like beautiful high shine finish to the lips. They're not overly sticky. Sugar Sugar specifically is like the most perfect nude lip gloss. It literally can be paired with absolutely any 
like nude lipstick. So this is definitely still a favorite of mine. The last other product that I mentioned in that favorites video was the Urban Decay lip gloss in the shade Savage. The next lip gloss that I've been loving this month are the new Urban Decay lip glosses. It's not really this color in particular, it's more like the line in general, but I do really love this color. I actually don't even have that product in my collection anymore. I decluttered it not too long ago. Urban Decay completely discontinued that lip gloss line and they sort of just like replaced them with a whole new line of lip glosses. So they don't even sell that lip color anymore, but it was a really pretty like bright fuchsia shade, but when you would apply it to your lips, it sort of just gave your lips a little bit of a tint. It's not really a product that I've continued to love throughout the years. It wasn't really like a standout for me. I mean, especially considering the fact that I did declutter it. So that's my little update with that lip gloss. Not that it even makes much of a difference anyway because it's completely discontinued. So the next product that I mentioned in the video is Becca Champagne Pop. Now it's really funny because you see my reaction in the video. I had like just received it in the mail as I was filming so I was very dramatic and very excited as I was like applying it on my face. I was freaking out about it. I think that's when obviously Champagne Pop like was first released. Um, so the FedEx guy just uh, came to my door and dropped this little baby off. This is Champagne Pop. Oh my god, I figured I'd have to show you guys because it literally just happened and I am like... Oh... Yes. Yes. Do you see that glow, you guys? That's intense. This is gorgeous. I actually don't have my Champagne Pop anymore, not because I didn't like it, but because it broke. Literally all of my Becca highlighters have broken throughout the years, which is always so heartbreaking but the formula is so like soft that even if it just like gently taps your floor if you drop it it will just shatter into a million pieces and that has happened to me with moonstone it has happened to me with one of my opals and with champagne pop i do have one of these this is like the little duo that Jacqueline and Becca did release when they came out with the whole Champagne Pop collection. You have a blush here with a little Champagne Pop on this side. And I gotta say, Champagne Pop still is one of the most like beautiful highlighters. And I feel like it works really, really well with my skin tone. I really think you can't go wrong with Becca highlighters. Like the formula is so gorgeous. And every time I go back to one of the highlighters, I always ask myself why I use anything else. In my opinion, sometimes highlighters could be a little bit too metallic, which could just translate to be a little bit unflattering on the tops of cheekbones and it will like accentuate texture and just not look like you're glowing. It'll just look like you have like a metallic stripes on the top of your cheekbones. Becca highlighters always just look glossy instead of like fake and metallic looking, you know, and you could always build them up to be really intense, but they'll still look very flattering on the face or you can put them on pretty subtly if you want just like a nice little glow. I also mention a Sephora fan brush when I'm talking about the Becca Champagne highlighter. This has been my favorite highlighting brush. This is the Sephora Pro Fan Brush. It is amazing to apply highlighter. And it's so funny because I hate using fan brushes now to apply highlighter. It always makes the highlighter look like an actual stripe on the tops of my cheekbones. I never find that fan brushes like properly buff the product into my skin so that it actually looks like it's a part of my skin and not just like sitting right on top of it. The brushes that I do prefer to use nowadays are small little fluffy brushes like this one. This is the Real Technique setting brush. It's one of my favorite highlighting brushes because it's really nice and small and precise, but it's fluffy. So when I go into apply my highlighter, I'm really able to buff it into my skin, which just makes it look so much more natural looking and it doesn't look like I just have a stripe of gold or whatever. So that is definitely something that has changed throughout the years. Next up, I talk about some eyeshadows from Makeup Forever. This is the actual palette that I had featured in that video. I've had this thing for years and years and years. It's the Makeup Forever 9 Artist Shadow Palette. It is the most gorgeous neutral palette I've seen in a very long time. And I still do really like this palette. I definitely don't use it as much as I used to just because there are a lot of other neutral palettes that I have in my collection that are newer that I've just been more drawn towards lately. Now the Makeup Forever eyeshadows have been for a really long time. Like one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas is this type of eyeshadow formula that like I know will never disappoint me. Their mattes are incredible. They're so, so pigmented and creamy and easy to work with. They're never chalky and the metallics are like out of this world, you guys. Like they are so intense. I know if I want like a, a shadow with an impact, I could always go towards a Makeup Forever Artist eyeshadow to get it. Now, unfortunately, first of all, this eyeshadow palette is not sold anymore and they also reformulated their eyeshadow. And now when I saw that they were reformulating their eyeshadows, I got really nervous because a lot of the times when companies do that or brands do that, 
they sometimes <laughs> are never as good as like the original but i was so happy to see when i tried the new formula that it was honestly i don't even know how but even better than the original so if you were on the fence about makeup forever artist eyeshadows you didn't know if they were worth the price or worth picking up know that they definitely are at least in my opinion i think that they are amazing especially the metallics they are like out of this world, incredible, gorgeous, intense, stunning. <laughs> I love them. Definitely a favorite that has continued throughout the years, even though the eyeshadows have evolved, I have continued to really, really enjoy them. Next up, I talk about the Makeup Geek blush in the shade Romance. This is Romance from Makeup Geek. This is the type of blush that you wear during the summer to make your skin glow. Now there was definitely a point where Makeup Geek was really, really popular and very big on YouTube. Like you could not watch a video without somebody mentioning a Makeup Geek eyeshadow or Makeup Geek blush. I feel like recently that just hasn't been the case. I haven't really heard that many people talk about like Makeup Geek that much anymore, which is so strange and I'm really not sure why. For me, I feel like it's because I don't really use like single eyeshadows anymore. Whenever I do an eye look, I always gravitate towards a palette rather than like all of the single eyeshadows that I have. So because of that, I just sort of haven't um, been talking a ton about Makeup Geek because obviously Makeup Geek is all about like single eyeshadows. However, I do really like the Makeup Geek blush formula. I do think that it is underrated. For some reason, when things are in like a single pen, I just don't reach for them as much as I reach for like my other blushes that are in an actual compact. I don't know why that is. I think it's just because like it sits in a big palette and I don't have room for a palette this big in my vanity. So I feel like what I would have to do to get myself to use this more is to just put it in like a smaller magnetic palette so that I could actually reach for it because the formula for the Makeup Geek blushes really are like so nice. The colors are beautiful and they're really inexpensive and really great, especially Romance. It's really pretty. Sort of like the same vibe as like NARS Orgasm, but I actually like Romance a little bit more because it's not as chunky. The next part that I talk about is so random. It's actually a tanner. It's the Million Dollar Tan Mermaid Mousse Extreme for face and body. Now I have the Million Dollar Tan Mermaid Mousse Extreme for face and for body. Now I have not used Million Dollar Tan probably since 2015. <laughs> the tanner that I have been using though for like the past, I would say like two, three years that I do really like is the Loving Tan 2 Hour Express. That one is my favorite if I do plan on doing it myself. But over the last month, I've been really obsessed with spray tans and I never thought that I would become a spray tan person, but... I am. I have one on right now. It's sort of almost gone though. I got it like over my birthday so I could be bronze and glowy when I turn 24. So yeah, the Million Dollar Tan Mermaid Moods Extreme is not a product that I use anymore. So next up, I spoke about two Laura Mercier products and I swear, as I was looking through all of like my favorites videos, just sort of trying to pick which one I wanted to pull products from today, almost every single favorites video that I watch, I spoke about the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. On an everyday basis, I've been wearing the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer every single day. In 2015 and in 2014 and in 2013, the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer was like what the It Cosmetics CC Plus uh, Tinted Moisturizer is for me today. You guys know that that is my all-time favorite everyday type of foundation product, but back in the day before I discovered the It Cosmetics CC, the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer like was my jam, and that was because it was the product that my mom used, and when I started to use Tinted Moisturizer, that's what she bought for me, so it's what I had used for the longest time just because that's that's what I knew. It's a really great, just like simple, natural coverage type of tinted moisturizer, but I actually don't even have it in my collection anymore. I decluttered it when I was going through all of my foundations because it was just really, really, really old and I felt like it was time that I got rid of it and I just haven't really repurchased it since just because I have other like everyday foundation products that have really stolen my heart and uh, I feel like as of right now at least I can't really stray from them and that is, like I said, the It Cosmetics CC Plus as well as the MAC Face and Body. Those are the two that I always go between on an everyday basis. So the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer, even though I think it's a good product, like if you put it in my hands today and you said, you got to use this, I would be like, okay, fine. It's, it's a nice product, but I'm definitely not as in love with it as I used to be. However, the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation is still a foundation that I use all the time. And then for at night when I want a little bit more coverage, it's actually the foundation that I'm wearing on my skin right now. I have gone back to 
another one of my tried and trues. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I sort of have always had like an on and off relationship with this product. There are times when I use this a ton and there are times where I sort of just like, you know, put it on the back burner, but I will always, always go back to it. It's a really great go-to for me. And right now I am on the Luminous Silk Foundation train. It has been living in my everyday vanity and I love using this when I want just a little bit more coverage like for events or night outs or anything like that. I find it to be very natural looking. It has a slight like luminous finish to it. It's nothing too dewy though and it also just has really great like medium to full coverage. So I do still really like this product. Next up we've got the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. I've been wearing this underneath my eyes literally every single day. I'm wearing it underneath my eyes right now. There was a time where the Naked Skin Concealer was like my go to Holy Grail concealer. It was literally the only concealer that I wore. I feel like at the time that that product was released, it was almost like the shape tape of that time. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was using it and I was definitely no different. I was like so in love with that product and I've probably gone through throughout the years like five tubes of that stuff. However, the last time that I finished that concealer, I did not repurchased it and I currently don't even have it in my collection and that is because I feel like my taste in concealers have sort of changed and shifted over time. There's really not like a huge reason why I stopped using the product. I just feel like over time I found other concealers that I just much prefer. And for example, the NARS Soft Matte Concealer is one of my favorites. I also love the Clinique concealer, this one over here. It's the Beyond Perfecting Super Concealer. This one is so great. The Bare Mineral Serum Concealer is one that I've been using also for years that I absolutely love. And of course the Shape Tape when I want something a little bit more full coverage. So I feel like the Urban Decay Naked Skin just didn't really live up to all of those other ones. That is why I don't really use it anymore and it's not a favorite of mine anymore unfortunately. I also spoke about a black eyeliner from NARS called Via Veneto. It's probably one of the longest wearing eyeliners I've ever tried. I've worn this in my waterline and it has not gone down my face, which is always a plus when I wear black. And it's really funny because I feel like I almost never wear black eyeliner anymore. I mean, I do as like a winged eyeliner, but in my waterline, I rarely, rarely, rarely put black in my waterline. Even if I'm doing like a really dark smoky eye, I will almost always use a dark brown. This one from Marc Jacobs is one that is my current favorite. This is the Highlighter Matte Gel Eye Crayon in the shade Earthquake. This NARS eyeliner, I remember, was really good. It was like a very, very long wearing formula and I do still like that NARS eyeliner formula, but I think if I had to choose, I would definitely choose the Marc Jacobs highlighter formula over the NARS one, just saying. The last product that I spoke about are the Anastasia Single Eyeshadows. But I've been wearing Anastasia eyeshadows a ton this month. But during that time, I feel like I definitely did prefer single eyeshadows over eyeshadow palettes. Like I said, I really do love Anastasia eyeshadows. I've just been way more drawn towards their eyeshadow palettes than their eyeshadow singles. And the Soft Glam palette has been one of my favorites lately. It's been like my current go-to everyday palette and it's been living in my everyday vanity lately. So guys, that's actually it. Those are all of my updates on all the products that I mentioned in my June 2015 favorites. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And that's it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.